Neutral is a very important concept to understand, and it has some of the coolest mind games to showcase in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Today, I'm going to explain the neutral game and show off how pro players win neutral as well. So what is neutral? The neutral game refers to the state of the match when neither player has a significant advantage. It's the foundation upon which all other aspects of the game are built and mastering it is crucial for success at the highest level. What it comes down to is good movement and safe options until you land an attack that can get you a combo or can grant you stage position. The moves you want to tend to use in neutral are neutral air, back air, or forward air, forward tilt and down tilt, and depending on your character, their various specials. Moves you don't want to use in neutral consist of smash attacks, dash attacks, and grabs. These moves have a high amount of end lag and can lead you to taking big combos. I would actually even recommend changing your C-Stick to Tilt Attack to avoid using too many smash attacks, one. And two, it allows you to do pivot tilts, such as pivoting backwards and using your tilt, or pivoting forward and doing a pivot cancel tilt. This can help you create better spacing in neutral, and especially if you play a sword character, this will help you immensely. I'm about to show you a clip of Tweak playing Sephiroth. Notice how his game knowledge and his immense spacing with Sephiroth allows him to nearly clutch the game. He lands with a forward air, which he clearly could have gotten shield punished, but Flutini elects to go for a down tilt to try and get more damage and seal the stock. From here, Tweak goes back and spaces an F tilt, but if we slow down the clip, we saw in both scenarios, Flutini went for a down tilt. Keep this in mind as you go further through the clip. Tweak goes for a forward air, and Gluttony lands on the ground with a forward air. If we remember in the last two clips, Gluttony went for a down tilt. So here, due to the risk reward of the game state, Tweak goes for a down smash because most likely Gluttony will go for a down tilt, and Sephiroth's one wing mechanic makes it so that when you have wing, you can actually armor through those moves. Also, if Gluttony shields here, his shield will be popped because the down smash is especially strong at breaking shields. Not to mention that he's already on his last stock, so he definitely needs a big reward here. So the risk reward in this situation is certainly worth it in a game where Tweak will most likely lose anyways. Looney actually ends up spot dodging, but it works out for Tweak in the end. And Tweak just gets another spaced back air. Tweak uses his tilts and aerials to not only hit the opponent, but he uses it to deny an area so then he can influence where the opponent goes. Notice how he's staying out of Wario's burst range and keeping him at the bay of his sword so he doesn't get hit. Look at how Tweak perfectly plays around down tilt. Tweak was also a Wario player at one point and knew that he's looking for down tilt in a dash attack at all these percents. He rolls away from the down tilt and then shields the dash attack, letting him get a grab and that ultimately ends up getting him the stock. Tweak is in the corner but manages to get a double jump and then lands with a forward air. From there, he tries to anticipate the double jump by going for another forward air. And then, since he knows Gluten is trying to go towards the center of the stage, he lands with his very safe neutral air that combos into back air. After seeing that amazing neutral from Tweak, you would think he would go on to win the set, right? Well, as it turns out, things didn't go according to plan. Try oh, uh -oh, we're going There's a waft on deck. Okay, man. Yep. Oh, no, he's gone. Oh, you know, he wants to win. Oh, I think he wants to win. Oh! <laughs> Despite Tweak losing, he showcased excellent neutral in that clip. However, one weakness of characters who space or who have large hitboxes is that they have really slow frame data, which means they're open to getting whiff punished. Whiff punishing means as soon as they're in the lack of a move, they can get hit for a combo. MKLeo is one of the best users of this. Let's take this clip versus DeBuzz, for example. He's at the ledge, obviously, but he jumps over DeBuzz's laggy options and lands the fair one into the drag down up air and a down smash. This could be- Oh, Delphus has to confirm! The classic, bring it back, baby! And he is still going for the gun, up oh, gun! Listen to it! And the lag is not enough to fall to the depths as well. The boss still has a fighting chance, but it's only- Leo gets another chance as the buzz goes for the first forward smash and then goes for the chakram forward smash. Notice how Leo barely moves out of range with a double jump. Eventually, he drifts his way in, gets the back air, and wins the entire tournament. Second, we'll do it! My God! This man closes it out, he brings back the Joker, and he makes it happen. Great whiff punishing, 
can clutch you tournaments. But what if your character doesn't have a big sword to space with? Next, I'm going to showcase you a wonderful clip of Light going up against MK Leo at Genesis 9. Light was able to burn so much meter off his lead traps. It was so consistent. Off the Light goes for a neutral air here because neutral air is safe on shield. It also sets up into his various combo starters. It's safe because when he lands with neutral air on shield, he gets the frame advantage, meaning Light could strike first after landing the attack. However, in this situation, he hits Leo with a cross-up aerial, meaning he lands behind him rather than right in front of him. Leo responds with a jump because he doesn't want to get hit. While this interaction is very short, keep this in mind for later in the clip. Really amazing stuff here coming out from that Light, kind of taking away Arsene from the equation. Exactly. Light eventually goes for a full hop down air. Leo elects to go for an a hop. Unfortunately for Leo, this a hop whiffed and it has a lot of end lag, so Light gets to whiff punish him by going for a dash attack, which shuts up many of Fox's combos. Light goes for a short hop right in front of Leo's shield, and Leo is most likely anticipating a neutral air. But if we remember in the last scenario, Leo jumped away to get away from neutral air. So Light does a tomahawk baiting out the jump afterwards, pretending to neutral air, and then up airs to cover the jump. While the second hit of up air didn't connect, Light perfectly read Leo's option. Once again, Light lands on his shield, and now he gets to pick whatever option he wants because he knows Leo's gonna go for a different option other than jump. Light decides to go for an up tilt to get his offense started. However, Leo grabs him, but in the end, the up tilt ends up putting Leo in hit stun and the grab gets canceled. This time, it's Leo's turn to get his offense started as he lands with a very safe neutral air on his shield. Many players tend to spot dodge after they go for a safe aerial, anticipating a shield grab. However, Light sees right through this and goes for a rapid jab, holding it in place to cover the spot dodge animation and punish him. At this point, Leo lands right in front of Light. Light anticipates Leo going in, so he goes for a down tilt, and worst case, if he's sitting there, then the down tilt is perfectly spaced. All of that combined leads to this beautiful punish. You're gonna be stuck on this platform. You're definitely eating all the uppers oh in the world. And Lord. just enough. Wow. He's this not scared of our sin at all. He's just not shy. I to demonstrated that if you keep track of your opponent's responses to your safe options, you can win neutral more and get into advantage sooner. So be sure to keep track of how your opponent deals with your pressure. It's also very important in neutral to have unpredictable movement. As soon as your movement becomes predictable, it's pretty obvious to see what moves you're looking for. New Days and his Peach demonstrated the unpredictable movement concept flawlessly. I'm gonna show you two clips of New Days absolutely juking his opponent and getting stocks off of it. Being prepared for it. A good little back and forth exchange. We're getting right out Light attempts to punish Peach with a predictable landing by going for an up smash and getting the kill. However, as we see from Mudes, he double jumps, then floats to cancel the double jump animation, and then fast falls in order to punish Light's up smash in time. And we see after that Mudes is immediately rewarded for it. Goes for a big time up smash, not gonna get anything off it. Yeah. Wow! You the back air, the classic here from Light, though. Light is forced to shield because Mudez is landing near him and he threatens back air, a safe move that also kills. Mudez knows Light is scared of back air, so he runs up to his shield and just floats there waiting for a response. And Light ends up rolling away. Once again, floats above Light and lands with back air because it's safe. And Mudez needs to threaten a hitbox there so Light doesn't run in and get his offense started. This is where Mudez backs up and floats a third time, but cancels the float immediately, runs forward, and then float cancel forward airs to cover Light's dash in. The reason Light dashed in is because Mudez was doing the same float back back air multiple times, and this time Mudez finally changes it up, granting him the stock. Right back. There it is, <laughs> yep. there, it is. <laughs> there it is. Find the what, DK? Oh. I was like, find the, find the hit. He's like, you mean this one? <laughs> this is why great movement is rewarded heavily in Smash Ultimate, and you should definitely go into training mode and practice moving around with your character. I'm going to show one more clip of Tweet playing up against Axiom XL. This is going to display some zoner concepts, and although Tweet is not playing a zoner by any means, he's up against Kazuya Mishima. And there is no way you want to interact with Kazuya Mishima. Tweet threatens the ground with a banana, forcing XL to jump. From there, he goes from aerial monkey flip, but goes for the attack version to hit him. Tweak waits on Kazuya's laggy landing, and then throws a banana to cover his landing, netting Tweak a free combo. Tweak grabs a banana again, but this time, he waits patiently, and then goes for monkey flip. 
However, this time he goes for the grab version. XL's threatened by Banana on the ground and he's now conditioned to hold shield to deal with it. He grabs Banana again and goes for a monkey flip, then throwing the banana at XL's shield. Tweet goes to the platform and then goes for another monkey flip. However, XL doesn't feel threatened by Banana at that distance anymore and decides to let go of shield and dash in. However, Tweet immediately throws Banana, throwing off his timing and getting him a free combo. XL is essentially forced to guess at every interaction due to Tweet's good neutral and his camping skills. If you apply this to a zoner such as Samus, you could do the same thing. You just replace monkey flip with a grab, for example, and aerial monkey flip with a forward air, and then for the projectile, it's your charge shot. So yeah, guys, in review, be sure to stick to safe options that are either well-spaced or are safe. Keep track of how your opponent responds to your pressure, and be sure to have good and fluid movement that's unpredictable. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you learned anything today or enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. This will let me know you guys want me to make more videos like this, and I can produce more quality content for all of you. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.